Your attitude shapes your life. If you think you are always sad, you are always unsatisfied, you have no friends, you always get scolded by your parents or teacher, then that is your life. On the other hand, if you think you are happy, your happiness is not dependent on others, you are always satisfied, you get praised by your teachers and parents, then this is your life. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Isha Rajput and for those who are new, I talk about law of assumption and manifestation. If you are interested in this, I would love to have you here. And feel free to check out my Manifest Money Like Magic workbook. As you all know, our mindset regarding money is eventually that what we have absorbed in first seven years of our life, that is when we are in our theta state. What we absorb, then it becomes our belief, which later becomes our blockages and path of money. And we ourselves push us into the middle income group or poverty. Good thing is that it can be changed. I have compiled a workbook with the questions that you need to ask yourself in order to change your mindset regarding money. This workbook clears all the blockages and negative beliefs and your programming regarding money. You can combine this workbook with the wealth subliminal that I have mentioned in the description down below. After 21 days, you can see the result yourself and manifest money like magic. In the book, Power of Awareness by Naval Godard, he talks about how a woman changed her assumption and got what she wanted. The story goes as follows. One day, a costume designer described to me her difficulties in working with a prominent theatrical producer. She was convinced that he unjustly criticized and rejected her best work and that often he was deliberately rude and unfair to her. Upon hearing her story, I explained that if she found the other rude and unfair, it was sure a sign that she herself was wanting and that it was not the producer but herself that was in need of a new attitude. I told her that the power of this law of assumption and its practical application could be discovered only through experience and that only by assuming that the situation was already what she wanted it to be, could she prove that she could bring about the change desired. Her employer was merely bearing witness, telling her by his behavior what her concept of him was. I suggested that it was quite probable that she was carrying on conversations with him in her mind, which were filled with criticism and recriminations. There was no doubt but that she was mentally arguing with the producer, for others only echo that which we whisper to them in secret. I asked her if it was not true that she talked to him mentally, and if so, what those conversations were like. She confessed that every morning on her way to the theatre, she told him just what she thought of him in a way she would never have dared address him in person. The intensity and force of her mental arguments with him automatically established his behavior towards her. She began to realize that all of us carry on mental conversations, but unfortunately, on most occasions, these conversations are argumentative that we have only to observe the passerby on the street to prove this assertion. 
that so many people are mentally engrossed in conversation and few appear to be happy about it. But the very intensity of their feeling must lead them quickly to the unpleasant incident they themselves have mentally created and therefore must now encounter. When she realized what she had been doing, she agreed to change her attitude and to live this law faithfully by assuming that her job was highly satisfactory and her relationship with the producer was a very happy one. To do this, she agreed that before going to sleep at night, on her way to work, and at other intervals during the day, she would imagine that he had congratulated her on her fine designs and that she, in turn, had thanked him for his praise and kindness. To her great delight, she soon discovered for herself that her own attitude was the cause of all that befell her. The behavior of her employer miraculously reversed itself, his attitude echoing as it had always done, that which she had assumed now reflected her changed concept of him. What she did was, by the power of her imagination, her persistent assumption influenced his behavior and determined his attitude towards her. With the passport of desire on the wings of a controlled imagination, she travelled into the future of her own predetermined experience. We blame others for treating us badly. But ask yourself what you had already assumed in your mind. You thought that they will treat you bad, so they did. You imagined how will they react towards you. So they did. You imagined getting yourself blamed. So they did. You imagined sulking after having that argument. So you did. You thought of it, you framed it, and then you were served with it. But what if you had thought of thanking others the way they had treated you? What if you had thought of having great time with the people around you? What if you had thought of laughing so hard with people around you that your stomach hurts and your eyes waters? What if you have imagined love and happiness? You framed it in your mind and then you were served with it. Our attitude is what determines our life. It can determine something very small in our life, like having an argument with people around us, to something very big, like having your own dream coming true. No one else, not even the God, determines your life. You are the creator of your life. You are the God of your life. You control it consciously, and you get what you are conscious of.